All right, all right. What's happening, y'all? Thanks for tuning in to the Crash Bang Boom podcast. I'm your host, Jody Smith. Today's guest is none other than Cody Willis, who's the powerhouse drummer of noise groove duo Big Business, who have also been two fourths of the Melvins. In the case of the Melvins, Cody found himself playing drums alongside one of his idols, Dale Grover, and the two made for one hell of a dual drumming team and uh, a really incredible phase of the Melvins as well. But uh, we get into nightmare gigs in New Orleans, uh, of which he had mentioned uh, a venue that, that neither of us could remember at the time, and I realized that he was talking about what was Monaco Bob's in the mid-90s, which was a crazy club that I used to go to and saw a lot of great, great shows there. Uh, and just a really cool time. Uh, his story is a, a little less fortunate and a little less cool. It's actually quite fucked up, but it's a good story nonetheless. But we also talk about Texas barbecue, uh, earth shattering hangovers, learning to play double drums with an idol, and compensating with visual cues for the spaciness that is Melvin's music. Last minute subbing for Unsane's Vinny Signorelli. Uh, the origins of big business and Murder City Devils, uh, plus touring tips and the early connections to the drums that uh, last to this day with Cody. So uh, yeah, get out and check that dude out. Check his bands out. It's good shit. Here we go, y'all. Crash, bang, boom. <laughs> I'm here with the one and only Cody Willis, uh, playing with Big Business tonight. Uh, previously with the Melvins, Murder City Devils. Still playing with Murder City, De- Murder, Murder City Devils. Jesus. Hey, yeah, you want to take it? <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. We we still do a, a couple shows a year. Cool. Very yeah. cool. Tell me about this run that you're on right now with Big Business, man. Um, it's uh, the Summer Safari Tour. We're, we're just going. We had to. Uh, uh, we had kind of a little bit of a health scare last year, and we had to cancel a run. So we're kind of making up. Day. Was so that your health scare or Jared's? Or? It was not. Jared had an issue, but it's totally he's okay. That's and good. Everything's good. So uh, we're we're back 100 percent and everything's good. And nice. uh, yeah, we're just trying to make up the dates that we had to miss. So it, technically, we're still supporting our last record, Command Your Weather. Yep. Um, and yeah, nice. it's been great so far. Awesome, man. I'm looking forward to seeing y'all. Speaking of health scares, uh, last time I saw you play, you were subbing in, I believe, with with Unsane, right? Yeah, sure. Okay, because I just interviewed Vinny. Oh, cool. He had what, I mean, if you could call that a health scare, like he, that was about he nearly as, died. That, yeah, that twice. was about as scary as it gets. <laughs> yeah, it was very serious. So. Holy shit. It was super last minute, right? Yes. Uh, so you you went out thinking, I'm going to be doing double drumming with the Melvins, and then it was like, oh, I'll be doing double drum with the Melvins, but I'm also going to be playing half of a set with Unsane as well. We did that. Well, what actually we did, yeah, we had to do that where uh, uh, Dale played half the set. Yep. I played half the set. And I think it was right down to the last day. Like, wow. Vinny didn't get on his fight. That's, that's like, my understanding. On the last day, yeah. And, and uh, so it was last minute, but uh, Dale's a quick study, and I was, you know, you just get thrown into it sometimes, and you just figure it out, and it was fine. So first couple shows were a little little weird, but then it was – it was fine after after first couple shows. Nice. But then back to back after that big business had a tour with Unsane. Like right after that tour ended, we went to Europe with Unsane. Vinny couldn't go on that either, so I just played drums. I played the whole set. Double dipping again. Yeah, yeah, double dipping. So it was it was fun though. I, I really like playing with that band. I've been a really uh, Dave Curran's one of my best friends. He's a I love his band Pigs as well. Yeah, oh, man, they're fantastic. They're, they're badass. They're really really good. And uh, it was fun to play with Dave. It was. I've known him for a long time, and he's you know been our, the Melvin sound guy and and uh, big business sound guy for a long time. But it was fun to actually like play music with him and that's wa- killer. Watch him on stage, like telling me to slow down. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's funny. I talked to to Vinny about that because uh, Unsane definitely have some pretty slow songs. So I was asking him uh, what the, what the key is to it, and you know he's he's such a funny Italian guy. He yeah. more or less said, "You feel it in your gut, then then it's good." Yeah. So that was that was that was his take on how to play slow. It. Yeah. Would you would you say that that was correct more or less? It is. It is. 
we might have different gut instincts. But, right. Uh, it, it's it's true. Like I I got the swing of it after a little while, but yeah. it is different. Like like with big business, just the two of us, or at the time it was the three of us. But it's kind of like go 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 go. Right. Like, there's a lot of space to fill up, and, and yes, and uh, just the way we attack it, I guess. Like that's that's how it is. But yeah, like way more laid back, but still hard. So oh it's yeah, a lot more. Uh, there's a lot more shoulder action. Yeah, going there on. is. Yeah, yeah. Nice, man. How, speaking of like acclimating to music, obviously I'd, I would imagine a little more time to do it, but two records with the Melvins. Uh, how was it? I, I've talked to a lot of people. The Melvins there's, are one there's of those. There's more than that. But yeah. cool. Oh, there are? Oh, yeah. Two studio albums? Yeah, well, there's the Bride Scream Murder. Oh, okay. There's Nude with Boots. It's Senile Animal. Senile Animal. And then we did uh, uh, The Bulls and the Bees. Like oh, it's shit. like an EP. Oh, okay. Yeah, and various other bits and bobs here God i'm probably forgetting something dale's I, gonna yell at me i believe it um but what i was gonna ask you it's uh the melvins are one of the recurring themes uh when i talk to drummers and musicians in general especially playing any kind of heavy music uh and one of it's i wanted to ask you um the the melvins material that i guess uh pre-existing stuff you know um mm -hmm. it has such an elasticity to it and seems so dependent upon sort of the the chemical makeup between buzz and dale mm -hmm. Absolutely. uh how was it like trying to navigate that uh, and get the feel of those songs because the spacing is strange, the timing is strange. It's very, like I said, very elastic. Was it? Yeah, I, I mean, our, our, when we started to do that, like our biggest concern was being able to like sync up, you know, at least like yeah. play at the same time without it sounding like a gigantic mess. Absolutely. And uh, except when we want it to. Right. And uh, that worked out right away. Like it, really? It, we, we, yeah, we, we figured out we could play the same thing at the same time and lock up right away. And like Dale is one of my you know, like, top three drum influences yeah. i don't know like he's he's right up there yeah if not number one uh since i was a kid so it's i i, I mean my style was already heavily informed by him and right. everything and it, so i i kind of like i can't say i always know what he's going to do or the choice what choice right. he's going to make or whatever but um I, I feel like i got pretty good at you know i'm sitting next to him at the same time so like i can always kind of see him out of my peripheral that's vision. what i was going so like, to say i can i can kind of he can telegraph a little bit, and I can tell where he's going to go and what he's going to do. So there, there's a visual component to that too. Very but cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, the kicking machine was that one, always one of your favorites to play in that in that lineup. I love that song. That was a good one. Yeah, that was a fucking that's killer really one. There's yeah. a lot of them, man. But that one, I, yeah. every time I hear it, it's like has kind of a Zeppelin sort of thing going on in the riff a little bit. Yep. And then Oh yeah, for sure. And there, I think there's a pretty weird back and forth that we do toward the beginning of the song drums oh there and it, is it's, and it's like uh it's different every time it's one of the songs that's every time we play it it's a little bit different oh i'm it's sure a little bit yeah so it was always challenging to see what was going to happen or not challenging but exciting i guess absolutely <laughs> man not knowing what's going to happen exactly so Uh, was the Murder City Devils was that one of the bigger bands so your first bigger bands that, that you were in yeah I mean that was my first band I ever toured with oh okay uh, um, and we were all like 20 and 21 years old when wow. we started doing that so uh, I, I feel like I'm tied to those guys forever kind yeah, of I just like we I mean we were really young when we did it and it was a different time back then like, yeah there was not cell phones right right or oh it's a totally different word internet world. <laughs> so, I know it's a whole different it's hard to it believe like that we even lived it phone booths and calling cards <laughs> yeah and, uh, asking gas stations for directions yeah and just like networking with different punk houses and, and people who were willing to put on shows and have us come in and play and stuff so what was the impetus for that band like like coming together what did you go to high did you go to high school together did you grow up in the I same actually, neighborhood I actually I actually moved to Seattle when I was like uh 20 oh really from 19 where? or 20 uh from mount vernon washington which is like okay it's like an hour north okay um i used to do when i was a kid i did martial arts and i i ended up like teaching for a while in yeah. my teenage years and uh i heard I had, the story in the joe wong podcast yeah, yeah, about yeah, how yeah, your, yeah, yeah, your master yeah, yeah, took your had, girlfriend and the whole thing yeah and then, yeah yeah to falling out <laughs> and uh, uh that's a fucked up story man i kind of did a like fuck it i'm out of here and like right. I, I just figured i'd go to seattle and uh was this find somebody to play with mid 90s and, and, yeah, yeah, this early 90s, I guess, like 94, 95. Very cool. And then um, I randomly met uh, Dan Gallucci at a, at a party. Yeah. And we just started talking about music and stuff. And uh, I didn't really know his background. He, You know, he's in hardcore bands and stuff. Right. This band Area 51 and The Hookers, um, uh, Death Wish Kids. 
but I had no idea, you know, like I, I, I didn't know about any of those bands at all. And he was talking to me about him and a couple of the guys he knew who were like hardcore kids uh-huh. wanting to start a rock and roll band. Yeah. You know, just because like hardcore was kind of, it was definitely established at that point. And, yeah, like, and so they wanted to do something different and play like in a rock band. And I thought that sounded like a great idea, like approaching it from that side of things. Right. And he was telling me about this singer that he knew that wasn't like anybody I'd ever seen before. Okay. And he was right. <laughs> and and uh, we had one practice and everybody was like really excited. And uh, we just went from there and started figuring out what we could do to record and, and do play shows and do right. a West Coast tour. And yeah. That's awesome, man. Yeah. When you first started uh, playing, I guess, what were you primarily listening to uh, or playing along with or what were some of your early influences? Were you listening to the Melvins? Like, Oh, yeah, a uh, big time. Yeah. So right when you started playing, you were like already into the Melvins and that was a part of your formation. I, I started playing when I was like formative. 15 for real, like trying to play the drums for right. real. Yeah. Uh, um, and I, I, I didn't have anybody to teach me really. Like Mount right. Vernon's kind of a small town. And yeah. I had a couple guys who kind of like showed me how to like set up the kit and everything. Yeah. But I, I just started right at the so I, ACDC back in black. There you go. I would just put that on the, the uh, place to you know, start. Get a blaster right behind me and just like that. I could keep up with it. I could figure out, you know, like what goes where. And, yeah. Uh, I, th- I thought it was a really good lesson in just like laying it down. And like it's what I tell every person who's talking about playing the drums. I like just start there. Yeah. 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 And it, it was great. And, and then I think the other one. After that, it was like Aerosmith's greatest hits. Great, and like uh, uh, I did that, and then Joey's a badass drummer, man. He's he, got some pocket, and he oh, yeah, really, yeah, can really yeah. play like, dude weird grooves. swingy stuff, and, and like shuffles, a, shuffles, exactly, yeah. exactly. Uh, and weirdly enough, like when I was a teenager, I I, I didn't like Led Zeppelin at all, really, because I, it was like what the, all the jocks listened to. In oh, high weird. School. Like they're like all the jocks in my high school were super into Zeppelin and stuff. So oh, it was that's like, strange. That's no way. Like I didn't want to have anything to do with it. You know. Wow. <laughs> right, right. I wasn't so much into them growing up because a lot of my parents' friends were all into Zeppelin, and there were like the the classic rock radio stations that yeah. they all listened to. Played it at nauseum, in, so I had is, heard Stairway to Heaven like so can, many it fucking times. Yeah. Yes, omnipresent Zeppelin all the time. So that, that's why, like, I, I I knew I wanted to do something different than than that stuff, just because it was everywhere. And uh, at the time, I think I talked about this on Joe's podcast a little bit too. But, like, that's kind of when like this crazy music scene was happening in Seattle. And, right. And like, I, I couldn't believe that it, something like that was happening so close to where I lived. So it's unbelievable. Yeah. We, we would just drive down to Seattle all the time and see whatever bands were playing. Like, really? Uh, yeah. 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 Were the you able record. to see someone like early, early Soundgarden or, or just any of this? I saw Seattle? Soundgarden a couple of times. Uh, uh, I got to see Nirvana a couple of times. Awesome. Um, I saw like built the spills, like first or second show. Very cool. Um, and just a lot of other like, like every there's so many bands it was crazy yeah yeah and some of them well, were so, weird did you get, were you able to see sunday Day real estate oh yeah, yeah 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 very yeah. cool um yeah i saw i saw william goldsmith's like yeah. one of the first foo fighter shows that was just way, way later whoa but that's like, crazy I, I saw them and then like i think i met william years later and like saw him play with those guys that guy's a fucking great drummer i still He's don't amazing. understand the foo fighters thing or He's what scary. happened with that <laughs> uh he's, he's oh, have you heard his Yes, I did. Oh man, yeah, it yeah, was. Yeah. It's it a crazy was, story. Yeah, 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 it's fucked up. I, so I, I do know the backstory, uh, but I, I still don't understand it. Having I, I've never seen him play live, but from records, live footage, uh, everything, I'm like, the guy's fucking great. Total monster. Yeah. I don't, I don't understand that at all. But yeah. whatever, you know, that's how it happens sometimes when I guess the the leader of the band's also a drummer, and you know, yes, weird bad shit happens. You got you got to have a good drummer in the band. Yeah. Sure. What were some of the bands that, uh, besides the Melvins, or some of the bands uh, that you were going to see live that were influencing you at the time when you were starting to get out and play? Well, I was just thinking, like when like when the Murder City Devils were happening, yeah, or before that, or, yeah, uh, or either either or. I guess so, I mean, if you were getting kind of blown away by like all the stuff that was going on in Seattle, but at a time you you were like driving down to it, but then you yeah. moved there. So I guess were you going the fir- out? The first time I saw the Melvins play, it was like game changer you know what i mean wow. like it was, it was it was really different and do you know I, I what just, record you saw him touring on at the uh, time i don't know i think that one was that if it was I in saw, the i saw him two times and once they played a like an in-store at the cellophane square uh-huh on in the university district in seattle uh-huh and then i saw them open for nirvana uh with the breeders and that wow. was on the in utero tour that's awesome and i'm not sure what i had already no had it had to be kind of like later after like Maybe Stoner Witch Houdini. No, era? it was after Stag. Oh yeah, oh after out. Stag. Okay, yeah, yeah, gotcha. Because yeah. I, I had already like been well versed in like Stoner Witch and, and and all that. You know, it's pretty mind bending stuff compared to totally. 
like you listen to Zeppelin and then like because all all of that stuff is there. Like the Melvins really do wear their influences on their sleeves. Absolutely. You uh, but you you just pick certain things out. They're very creative about. Uh, uh, disguising who they're ripping off, I <laughs> yeah, guess, or yeah, whatever. Yeah. They're, and, and Altering like, it enough, putting, stretching it out. Yeah, yeah, cut and pasting and, like, putting all this weird stuff together. So it, it was actually seeing them pull it off live the first time and, like, watching Dale Drum and how he used space. Yeah. Um, and coupled with, you know, hitting, like, doing, like, a three-way flam. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, his foot and his hands. And, like, yeah, yeah, he loves those. It was so, it was so thick. <laughs> yeah, so black. I mean, that's the... <laughs> I had a friend who was like, "How does he get his snare drum to say black <laughs> every time yeah. he hits it?" It's great. It so, does. Uh, yeah, it yeah, does yeah, convey yeah. that. It's funny. Um, but yeah, it, like just changed the way I thought about it. You know what I mean? Like uh, uh, the thickness and the value of space. Like, uh-huh. like putting space in there, and like it just adds more meaning to when you actually do right. finally hit the drum. You yeah. Know? Uh, I, I've always thought that you kind of had a, a good punk rock energy. Uh, was that something that you acquired playing in the Murder City Devils, or was that something that you feel like you had prior to that? Um, yeah, the, just as far as just the general energy. I yeah, like I, I think had you've kind always... of like a, a manic energy when I yeah. play the. Are you a fairly anxious person? Um, maybe I'm a fairly repressed person. I don't. <laughs> I, 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 I don't know. Like I, I, I uh, I'm anxious. I'm fucking always. Yeah. yeah. I, I get I get stressed out. I, yeah. I, I get stressed out when uh, uh, like if I can't play. Right. Drums every like I'll, I'll freak out, but uh, I don't know. I've always ended up playing in like pretty rock and high energy bands, yeah. so it just kind of became the thing that yeah. I do. I don't know. When you first started playing, uh, did you? you I, I'm assuming that uh, with the withdrawal that you're talking about is having that physical sort of cathartic uh, outlet and yeah, having sure. being able to beat shit in time that makes maximum noise. Yeah, it's exciting, yeah, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, it's addictive. It's exciting <laughs> and, and like scary. Like sometimes it happens where you're just like, you know, I, I can't do this. Like this yeah. is. Did you have those there's moments? Something, there's something to be said for like holding it down and driving the truck and yeah. like and like th- that too. But like, and you can't do it all the time. But uh, uh, those moments where you're just like, I think I might die. Right. Like I think this is it. <laughs> like this is I might barf or I yeah. might pass out. Like that. And that moment where you like actually pull it off and like get through it. And yes. You made it and you nailed it and then like, it's like it's great. It's really yeah. fun. When I've experienced those moments, it's more or less because uh, I, I used to never warm up. Now I'm, I'm turning 41 in, in a few days, and I've, I've, I now have the need to – got to warm up now. But sure. I've had moments where I didn't, or gigs rather, and then it's just like slinging fucking concrete gloves. My hands sure. lock up, and it's hot as shit, so I'm seeing stars. And, yeah, once you get through that, it's like – it feels like you just went through hell and back. It's, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. It's fucking ridiculous. And somehow, like, if you play long enough – or, I mean, at one time, like, you hit that wall – feel like you're gonna die and then you get past it yeah then you're fine yeah like then you're just like you just like plateau absolutely <laughs> it's like in your you could play for three hours after that. yeah like, yeah it yeah, really yeah, is yeah. weird train wreck gigs that you could think of i've certainly oh. i just had one recently but it wasn't so much my fault but i have sure, had somewhere sure. where it was my fault <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah yeah i have yeah would you want to share a one i mean <laughs> the murder city devils had way more than our fair share of train wreck gigs for sure oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. was like, it technical or stuff or just just god just, only knows just off the rails falling apart that just in the middle of the set like, was everybody wasted done. or no oh yeah oh yeah oh, okay yeah. yeah yeah yeah. have probably had something to do with it yeah i, I remember <laughs> on our first u.s tour we uh i don't know if i told this story before but like we were playing in new orleans for That's the first my time hometown. oh it'll happen well I, i've not this is by the way has happened to a lot of people that go to that town and get super fucked up and train wreck their gigs yeah it well <laughs> that one wasn't so much our fault actually uh not that that didn't ever happen but yeah. uh, uh we showed up we never played there before, and it was kind of like a honky tonk sort of place. Like, it do you remember the name like of it? I don't. I know that it's not there anymore. It was like under a freeway overpass, huh. kind of, uh, kind of on the outskirts of the quarter. Um, okay. But I, I can't remember the name of it. Huh. Somebody will remember the name of it. Uh, yeah. In in the band, but uh, yeah, it was kind of like an old older like honky tonk. Yeah. But not like like in a broken down kind of way. Huh. And. Uh, 
I guess a bunch of people didn't like the fact that we were called the Murder City Devils because we weren't from New Orleans. Oh, yeah. And they were taking some hometown pride and being the murder, cap, murder right. capital of the world or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so people were pretty hostile. And they, like, I remember a couple guys, like, pulled their chairs up to the front of the stage while we were playing. And it was, like, a way too big of a place for us to be playing. Uh-huh. On our first. I think there was maybe, like, 40 or 50 people there. Wow. And a couple guys pulled their chairs up to the side of the stage just to, like, mock us or, like, we were just sitting there with their arms crossed as if they were super bored. Yeah. Um, pretty macho, pretty pretty redneck energy. Yeah. Uh, so our guitar player, Dan, and our singer, Spencer, decided to go the other way with it and, like, while we were playing, got down and gave them lap dances, like, sat oh, in boy. their laps and, like, were playing. And, and uh, let's see, one guy knocked gl- Spencer's glasses off his face uh, I think Dan like got up and turned away from the other guy and like smacked him across the face with the headstock of his guitar. Uh oh! And then it was just mayhem from there. Like it, uh, everybody rushed the stage. Our roadie Gabe like hopped over this rail and just like clotheslined the entire group of everybody. Just knocked everybody completely to the floor, and we ended up like somehow like getting out of there, like getting out of the club. But it was like a full on brawl. No way! And, and then. Uh, yeah, then we left. <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> I'm not sure how many songs we got through, but we we, were, we left that area for sure. Wow. And there was another time in a... Uh, God, where were we in? I think it was El Paso, maybe San Antonio, but uh-huh. somebody didn't like the way our keyboard player was talking to them, so they went out and uh, smashed our windshield and slashed all our tires. No way! Yeah. God damn! Yeah. Wow. That's fun. How you just had that effect? Quite. I was about to say, clearly. Yeah. That's impressive, man. Did you did you did y'all find a, a a point at which you just uh, embraced that and said, "Well, this is just part of what we do, and we have kind of an antagonistic." Was it conscious? Were you like, "We're going to antagonize no. people"? Just people had a, a visceral fucked up reaction to what y'all were doing. No, we were just trying to like, uh, we weren't willfully antagonistic. You know yeah. what I mean? But it, we also weren't that hard to set off. Like if somebody, yeah, rubbed somebody in the, because it was a weird. It was a definitely like a family sort of attitude like uh-huh. if one person got into something then we were all in it that right. was it that was, and that was that uh, yeah. but yeah it, it didn't take much for the uh, the general vibe to go south but it wasn't I don't think we ever wanted that or nobody ever willfully went out of our way to like start <laughs> right. violence or anything like yeah, that yeah yeah that's fucking wild, man. Sorry, well, going, I guess, back to big business for a second. Uh, at some point, you and Jared, uh, y'all had already, y'all were already doing big business when y'all were in Seattle, and then, and then moved to LA. Yeah, Two thousand three, we started the band. Okay. Were there any duos that y'all you drew, drew inspiration from? Uh, mm, no. Sorry. There aren't many bass drums duos. I was thinking uh, one. Do you know the Japanese band Ruins? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're fucking we played awesome. Them before they're great. No way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Really? Mm-hmm. Well, did you where, did you play with them? We played in the with them in st- Chicago. Really? Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's that album, uh, Burning Stone. I think it is. Is like one of my. I, I love that oh, they're one. They're great. They're, they're amazing. That's killer, man. But we, we never set out to be a two piece. Like, was it, it just it out just of necessity? Is kind like, of like we, we we just started playing together and writing songs, and then we kind of just never found the right guy, or right or guys, or girls, yeah. or anybody to like fit in there. So we just kind of soldiered on with what we had. Yeah. Never, you know, people immediately labeled us as like a two piece which we were but right like i think that's kind of how we established ourselves but we never wanted we never set out to be like a two-piece band as an idea like yeah. it was just like we're starting a band and we want to do this now and write these songs but yeah that's just the way it worked out and we have like through the years like we had a couple different guitar players yeah. and and i don't know at the end of it we just decided the two-piece was that's kind of how we started out and it's right. where we back to your roots i guess so like i mean that's kind of how we write Anyway, yeah, yeah, and like exactly. We were, and we, I think it helped to finally kind of like make that conscious decision to be like, okay, we're just going to be a two piece, right? And we're going to write a two piece record, and the mu- this music is for two people to play. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. not. It's not like a, we're going to write these songs and then have all this room for all these guitar parts that we're going to put down in the studio and then never play live. Like we're gonna, okay, we're going to make this. Right. These are the songs for two people to play that are going to be accurately recreated live. Exactly. And yeah. And it was just better i guess that's awesome man yeah. does it is it liberating not having to deal with additional people does it feel there's there's some freedom in that it's, yeah always 
There has to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the more people you get, obviously, the more complicated everything gets. Well, when we people. first started, when we first started Big Business, I had just come off of uh, the Devils toured constantly, and I think we usually had about eight people in the van. So six people plus. Oh, my God. So it's like every day moving around as a group of people on tour is one of my I, it biggest pet crazy. peeves. It, it makes me, me insane because no decision can be made quickly. No. Uh, you're hungry. You want to get something to eat. Well, one person has some dietary restrictions oh, or God. one person doesn't like this kind of food. And everything just takes – just moving that much people around, it, it takes forever. <laughs> everything takes forever all the time. So, like, when Jared and I first started, I was like – this is incredible. Like, what do you want to eat? Uh, pizza. Okay, let's go. <laughs> that was that was that. You know, that is so, awesome. Yeah. Anytime there's less people moving around or occupying a space or whatever, it's everything goes faster. And uh, I don't know. I, it, it's it is liberating. Yeah. Absolutely. It's amazing given the the pain and the ass that touring can be that you've been touring as long as you have. Yeah. Oh, it's great too. I I I, I love it. Like it's 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 super fun. I like playing every night. You know. Yeah. I, I, I like. Beats a day gig. I like driving. Yeah, like one of my favorite things is like having a huge cup of coffee in the morning and listening to music and driving to the next show. You know, it's right. just like you're going someplace new. You're, you know, you're. I don't know. I like the traveling. I like like seeing different parts of the country. I like getting to do it for the best reason I can think of. You Absolutely. Know? So it's I, I I don't mind it at all. I hear you. Uh, having moved to LA, in, in hindsight, do you feel that it was beneficial in the end? Yeah, for that, sure. That was the right. That was the right call. Yeah. What do you enjoy most about uh, living in L.A. when you have time and when you're there? Um, it's a real city. You can literally get anything you want there. Right. Um, and as far as, like, anything music-related, I mean, how many incredible studios are there down there? Of course. Uh, anything you want equipment-wise is readily available anywhere. Yeah. Uh, uh, like, my... DW, my drum company, uh, the the factory is right down there. By the way, that like, kit you're playing tonight is beautiful. Oh, thanks, thanks, man. Yeah, uh, it's it's, I love it. It's it, awesome. It, it's orange sparkle. I've always wanted one. Burnt orange glass. Oh the, the shit! Official, official <laughs> Fancy. Thing, but, uh, yeah, it's a cherry wood kit. Uh, uh, the guys at DW are super fantastic, and they've treated me really, really well. Uh, I've been to the factory like eight or nine times. Awesome. They make everything there, and it's it's uh, it's really cool. Everybody who works there is like really stoked to work there. Yeah. And is like forty times better drummer than I am. <laughs> like I always feel totally embarrassed going there and like going to the showroom and like oh, like oh yeah check this out and it's like Scott from what I I, I, I don't, Scott sorry I don't know what your position is it, right. you know, if, if you're listening right but like I've met him a few times super nice guy and like he like sits down behind the kit and just like. Shreds. Shreds it. And I'm like, uh, you, you, you know, tries to hand me the sticks. I'm like, I'm good. That's cool. No, you're good. That, that's, you're pretty good at that. So, yeah, it's great. Yeah, the weather, uh, I'm uh, assuming? The weather is great. Uh, uh, anytime we come home from tour and being able to, like, go outside and sun. The, yeah. The first couple months when I moved, the first from Seattle we got there, I think we moved on New Year's Day. Wow. And it was just sunny and wonderful, and I was like living in this room with like floor to ceiling French doors. So every, every morning I had to wake up just and like open them open up, open these glass windows. Daylight. And, like, the, the breeze would you know like come in, and it was just like I can't. And I was starting to think there's something wrong with me. Like I felt right. different and like weird. And I'm like, oh yeah, I'm happy. Yeah, <laughs> like I feel I feel great. Yeah, imagine um, that. And it, it's like uh, there's so many cool little pocket neighbor neighborhoods all around. There's Lots of stuff there that uh, you wouldn't know was there uh -huh. unless you had been there already. Like, it's not – it doesn't really advertise itself right. that well. Like, um, and there's always something going on that you can go to or you can not go to anything and be totally anonymous and not see anybody. Like, if you don't want to see someone in L.A. or if you yeah. don't want to see anybody, it's really easy. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's easy to do. So yeah, for a, you, you really get to choose your own adventure, and that's, that's what I like about it. Nice. Speaking of weather, I spoke to uh, the drummer of Helms uh, Ali and um, – Hosey? Yes. Yeah. Uh, and uh, one of the questions that I asked her, I guess, growing up in the Northwest Coast, uh, and because Chris, obviously, with the passing of Chris Cornell uh, semi recently, I was just asking her, do you think that there's a correlation between the weather and maybe subsequent uh, introspection that uh, arises from just staying indoors so much, and then then that is maybe something that's inescapable, that darkness that uh, that that plagues some of the artists that have come from there and have yeah. committed suicide. I don't. I mean, <laughs> it's, it would be hard to argue against that, right? Yeah. Uh, right. Yeah. 
Yeah. I mean, I guess the voyeuristic spirit of, of watching these artists is like always awesome that they can go to the dark side and come back and, and sing these songs. Then we sing along and we celebrate the darkness, but we don't always necessarily have a connection to how dark they necessarily are. And then yeah. something happens and you're like, oh my God, yeah. what the fuck? You know, but it's, it's really hard to know what someone's personal reality actually is. Right. You know? So. You, you might think you have an idea about what their life is actually like, but you don't have any idea. I know, all. it's crazy. So it's, uh, it's a weird thing to think about. And, I hear you. Uh, yeah, it's a bummer, you know? <laughs> it's a bummer that it would have to come to that. And It seems, it seems like more times than not, drugs are involved. Yeah. Uh, when, when stuff like that happens. Yeah, um, agreed. So... I think that's probably a contributing factor. You yeah. Know, like, but I, I don't, I don't know. Yeah. I know lots of people up there that are seem to embrace it and are totally fine with it. Yeah, a great artist. So I, I, I don't know. Yeah. I was I, just curious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I don't know a lot of people where being super famous has helped them become more well-adjusted. Oh, definitely not. Doesn't so, seem to go that way, does it? Socially, anyway. No. You, you know what I mean? So, uh, I mean, throw drugs into the mix, and I don't know. If right. You, if you get caught on on the wrong rainy day, maybe that's the only option. I don't, I don't yeah. Know. There's a lot of variables for sure. Uh, kind of a strange segue, but food, with all the places that you've you've gone to, uh, what places do you love uh, to eat the most on tour? Are there any particular places, any country, city, wherever? Um, I've had, I've, I almost feel bad saying this, but like I've been able to eat at Franklin Barbecue in Austin, like, Several times you love, it, bar- it, love the barbecue. Yeah, I do. And uh, are you a sweet best. sweet meats all of it, or a little more salty like brisket, smoked brisket, pepper? I like the smoke. I'm a fan. Uh, uh, the Texas barbecue is really good. Uh-huh. Uh huh. But at Franklin Barbecue, like the, the I haven't fat, had it. It's it's incredible. The thing they that they do the best there, in my opinion, is the the fatty brisket. Oh yeah. And it's ju- it's just insane. It, like it, you pick it up and it's like falling apart as it gets to your mouth. Oh and, boy. And there's a whole. I'm sure he's got tons of secrets or whatever. But uh, the guy, Aaron Franklin, who owns it and runs it and started it, uh, used to play in this band. He's a drummer. Awesome. And he used to play in this band, uh, Those Peabodies. <laughs> really? I and don't they know used that. to come through. Uh, one of the bars I bartended at in Seattle, they would come through. And they played there a couple times, I think. And they were kind of like a, a kind of like a revved up sort of replacements. Cool. Like rock band or whatever. And they were really, I thought they were really good. And like years later, I stood in line. We were staying at, in, in East Austin. There's like this really shitty Super 8 hotel that yeah. we, we usually stay at because it's super cheap. But like it's a block and a half away from Franklin's. And I we played a show. I woke up with an earth shattering hangover. Oh, at like at like 6 a.m. and was just like, uh, <laughs> and I, I don't know if I could smell it, but I knew it was like two blocks away. I was like, OK, I'm never going to get another chance to do this. So I stood in line with a brutal hangover with a brutal hangover. Uh, waited to get in there and like finally got up there and the man himself was sitting there cutting orders to go. That's awesome. After everybody came through uh, talking to people like asking them where they were from um, and he got to me and he was asking me what I was doing. I was like oh my band's on tour and he asked me what my band was and I told him the big business. And he's like no shit. He was like that's that was the last concert I went to like the last time we were in town. No way. And I was like, no way. And he told me about being in those Peabody's, which I didn't put together, ah. that he was in that band. And I was like, oh, my God, I've seen you guys. And so, like, we're having this conversation as we're talking. He never asked me what I wanted. He was just – he just kept piling things onto oh, this God. huge piece of uh, brown butcher paper. So, like, by the time we were done talking, there was this mountain of <laughs> meat. Uh, it was, like, smoked turkey, the sausage, the brisket. Oh, boy. Uh, everything. Ribs. Uh, the ribs were really good, too. Yeah. And then he like wrapped up this basketball-sized bundle. I think he threw a couple, threw a couple handfuls of onions and pickles on top. Amazing. Sent it down the line. I, I, I think I think he bought it for us. That's awesome. And it was it was really really sweet, really, really nice, and like some of the best barbecue I've ever had. And it's it's it's. Really That's good. one of your favorite places. One of, my favorite of all places. yeah, of all the yeah. places I could see that. Yeah. I mean, I did no no sense in apologizing for that. That shit no. sounds good. Just hearing you talk about it's making me want to eat it right now. It's it's really good. Yeah. That's if, you, if you ever have the opportunity, I I highly recommend it. All right. Maybe he'll franchise. I don't. Know. Yeah. Yeah. Fucking a. Uh, one last question, man. Uh, big business or just uh, this year? What else do you do you have going on? Uh, you obviously you got a little more uh, shows with big business. What else is going on? Um, I think August 20th, uh, Murder City Devils are playing in Las Vegas. Cool. At the Psycho Fest. Oh, awesome. That'll um, be fun. And then we're going to do another West Coast run with Big Business in September. And then I think in November, we're going to go on a European tour. And then that's as far as we 
I don't know. We got to write some more songs. We yeah, we do that. Couple, do we, that. We have a couple recordings that are uh, in the can that I think we're gonna release pretty soon. Okay. But, yeah, it's it's g- gonna be time to be getting back into writing mode again. Gotcha. Or yeah. there is the the fade the the dual drumming the whole big business Melvin's thing is that are y'all gonna do that again or I don't know. Gotcha. I, I don't know. I, Maybe. I, Who knows? When when we were in the band, we weren't given a whole lot of. Uh, uh, headway as far as like what's coming down the pipe. Oh, I'm sure. So, so Buzz is the kind of guy where he's got plans A through A through Q, <laughs> right? <laughs> like lined up and like Absolutely. so anything. I, I think a lot of times he doesn't want to uh, get anyone's expectations or hopes up, so he's, yeah. he plays it pretty close to the chest as far as what's coming up. So, gotcha. Your guess is as good as mine. I hope we get to play with those guys again. That'd yeah, be really fun. Awesome. But, uh, yeah, I don't. I can't rightly say what those guys have uh, in store. I know Dale's been playing with the Red Cross. Okay. Um, which is awesome. And he occasionally plays with Off. Yeah. I think when Mario can't do it. Play, he's played with Honky a couple times as yep. well. Yep. Yeah. So. All right. I'll be looking for him. Yeah. A- any band would be lucky to have him. Absolutely. Yeah. Cool. Well, man, thanks for talking to me. Thanks, Jody. Thanks for tuning in. And thanks to Cody for being a rad cat and a, and a bitchin' drummer at that. Uh, I've seen him on quite a few gigs to date, and he always brings the ruckus to that ass, so to speak. So catch Big Business out on tour this summer and pick up a copy of Command Your Weather out on Joyful Noise Recordings. Get that shit, man. All right, next time, Crash Bang Boom!